Hi, I'm Travis Wayne Goodsell, and uh, I realize I need to do a, uh, an introduction to all of these different videos uh, if they get separated from others. Uh, I was born and raised Mormon of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as Nelson demands everybody call it. Uh, I have been in positions of high influence, not power and authority, influence and have seen and been involved in many things that have gone on. And so I also have uh, studied uh, the church uh, faithfully as a good Mormon boy has, was commanded to do. Uh, except that I didn't get to church history. I focused on scriptures and languages and uh, now that I've found out about church history, I'm now speaking out against the church and uh, encouraging uh, Mormons to leave. I am their warning voice to get out and free themselves from the bondage that we have all been under. And uh, I've talked about all of this in other places, but just so that you understand where I'm coming from, uh, in these uh, commentaries of General Conference uh, uh, for this session. And uh, uh, yes, on my YouTube channel, the Russians will put thumbs down instantly, uh, but uh, yeah, I already know who they are, and, and yeah, nobody's going to stop them, so it, the thumbs up and thumbs down mean nothing to me. They don't hurt my feelings. But if you're going to be fooled by them, oops. <laughs> so, uh, so understand, Mormons, that I want you safe. I want you rescued. And uh, for those who aren't Mormon, who are critical of the church, understand that your criticism is misguided because the church has deceived you. And we're getting to the next speaker, so I'll stop here. So this is uh, what's going on with everything that's going on. Earlier this morning, my wife's brother gave her a, a note that she had written to her mother many years ago. In part, that note read, Dear Mother, I'm All these white guys look the same. Today, <laughs> but I love you. And Is there some kind of a cloning project going on that I don't know about? That was an interesting thing. And I, uh, <laughs> I sat down and I wrote a note and it said, Dear President Nelson, I'm sorry I didn't give my talk today, but I love you. And somehow that didn't feel right. And uh. so here we are, and I'm happy to add my words to those that uh, have been spoken in this session today. Yeah, I'm adding my words. Many years ago, I traveled on a small plane with a newly certified pilot at the controls. At the end of our flight, we were <coughs> cleared to land. Another As we pilot. neared the ground, I heard an alarm in the cockpit warn the pilot to pull up. Ah, he's I talking about the, the Ethiopian crash and all that. In a downward direction, yep. Away from the runway and said, now. He's just like the other Our pilots. Plane rapidly moved to the, left the Boeing, down, what is it, 737s? Back to an appropriate altitude, re-entered the landing pattern and arrived safely at our destination. We later learned that another aircraft had been cleared for takeoff. If we followed the instructions of the alarm, we would have veered into rather than away from the oncoming plan. This experience taught me two important lessons. First, at critical moments in our lives, we will hear multiple voices competing for our attention. And second, it is vital that we listen to the right ones. <gasps> How do we choose? It's our opinion. Whatever it is that we choose is therefore the right one. And if it doesn't work out, blame someone else. We can't find it difficult to know which voices to trust. Can't trust Siri? Sometimes we crowdsource guidance in our lives, thinking the majority will provide the best source of truth. 
Other times we halt between two opinions, choosing to be neither cold nor hot. Still other times we follow what is convenient, focus on a single voice or issue to guide us, or rely exclusively upon our own ability to think. While each of these approaches can be helpful, experience teaches that they are not always reliable. What is popular is not always what is best. Halting between two opinions brings no direction. Convenience rarely leads to things that matter. Fixation on a single voice or issue can impair our ability to see, and relying solely upon our own thinking can lead us into a hyper-intellectual stupor of thought. If we are not careful, the wrong voices can draw us away from the gospel center to places where faith is difficult to sustain, and we find little more than emptiness, bitterness, dissatisfaction. <laughs> Let me demonstrate Don't what I mean by go against us, because it's the dark path of evil. Don't look at them who are happy, who have left the church. They're deceiving you. They're really miserable. <laughs> there is a spiritual equivalent to the death zone. If we spend too much time in faithless places, seemingly well Oh, I'm so miserable. If only I'd listened to the church leaders. In the Book of Mormon, we they would have shown me the right way to go. He enjoyed great popularity because his teachings were pleasing to the carnal mind. He said that parents and don't hate. teach foolish traditions designed to limit freedom. Don't be abusive. Don't withhold your substance from the poor. Whatever they choose because commandments are nothing more than conveniently contrived restrictions. To him, He's making a lot of assumptions about those who have the left the church. Mind created by belief in a being who could not exist because he could Sort of like the Mormon God now is? Horhor created so much unrest that he was brought before the chief judge and the high priest. There he rose up in great swelling words. Yeah, get him! And demanding a sign. I demand a I sign. He was struck so that he could not speak. Or, or I have silenced Mormons. Can you believe that? And thinking of precious truths. I have silenced demanded, Mormons. He lamented, I always. So who's the high priest or then? Or then begged hmm. for food until he was trampled to death by a group of Zoramites. The final verse in his story contains this sober reflection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and thus we see that the devil will not support his children. Which means if he was trampled on by Zormites with horses and chariots, they were the rich. Because the poor couldn't afford horses and chariots. Most often we hear him through impressions given by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the third member of the Godhead. He witnesses of the Father and the Son and was sent to teach us all things, and will show unto us all things uh, what we should do. The Spirit speaks to different uh, people in different ways. I wish I was in my recliner doing this. He may speak to the this. same person in different ways at different times. As a result, learning the many ways He speaks to us is a lifelong quest. Sometimes He speaks to our mind and in our heart in a voice that is small, yet powerful, piercing them that hear to the center. As long as it conforms to my words. <laughs> occupy our minds or press upon our the prophet's words. Other times our bosom will burn within us. As long as it conforms so times, to the prophet's words. Because <laughs> if you're hearts. finding out that the church isn't true, it's the we wrong feeling. In many places. It's the wrong we voice. When we pray, when we study the scriptures, and when we attend church, engage in faithful discussions, or study church the history. Oh, Surely Temple! In, in <laughs> this is a drinking game for Temple. <laughs> Today we sustain 15 men as prophets, seers, and revelators. Their spirituality and experience give them a unique perspective that we desperately need. Their messages are easy to find and spoken with absolute clarity. They tell or should us I do God drinking game? Know, whether it is popular or not. Seeking his voice in any one of these places is good, but seeking it in many of them is even better. And when we hear it, we need to follow the direction that is given. The Apostle James said, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. And President Thomas S. Monson once taught, We watch, we wait, we listen for that still, small voice. When it speaks, wise men and women obey. Wait a minute, what are you... 
Early in my professional life, Sister Homer and I were asked to accept a change in job assignment. At the time, it seemed to us a huge decision. We studied, we fasted, and we prayed, but an answer was slow to come. Study church history. But That'll give you your the answers. Press forward. As we did, we felt settled and soon learned that it was one of the best decisions we had ever made. As a result, we have learned that answers are sometimes slow to come. This can't be because it's not the right time. Because an answer is not needed. <laughs> Who knows? God trusts us to make the decision. Richard G. Scott once thought that we should be grateful for such times. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Just your guess. Orderly, if it works, it works. With the <laughs> and you need to decide which among all the different voices we will obey. Oh, oh, man. Will we follow the unreliable voices advocated by the world? <laughs> to allow our Father's voice to guide us in our decisions and protect us from danger. <laughs> the more diligently we seek His voice, the easier it becomes to hear. You know, psychiatrists think you're uh, crazy talk up, here. But that our ability to hear it has increased. The Savior has promised of course, I don't put my trust in psychiatry. And lend an but just so that you know. Counsel, he will give us more. I testify that this, is, that this promise is true for each of us. Nearly a year ago, we lost my older brother in a tragic automobile accident. Mm. John's early well, we years need to ban were cars, then, don't we? an accomplishment. But as he grew older, a broken body and uncooperative mind made life very difficult. Mm. While the healing he hoped for didn't come in this life, John nonetheless held to his faith, determined to endure as best he could to the end. Now, I know yeah. that John was not perfect. And he didn't but have I insurance to heal him. That gave him such Many voices invited him into the cynical fringe, but he chose not to go. Instead, he did his best to anchor his life at the Gospel Center. He lived his life there because he knew he would find the voice of his master there. He lived his life there because he knew it was there that he would be taught. Brothers and sisters, in a world with so many competing voices, I testify that our Heavenly Father has made it possible for us to hear and follow His. If we are diligent, he and his son will give us the direction we seek, the strength we need, and the happiness we all desire. In the name of Jesus Christ.